Good morning, Thomas Bebel. Good morning, Pauline. Thank you for being with us to share AXA Climate's commitments uh, within the Climate Finance Day and the Paris for tomorrow week. If I may, a short introduction. AXA is a world-leading insurance company. We are present in more than 50 countries and have more than 150,000 clients worldwide. Your size and your activity as an insurer imply a huge economic, social and environmental responsibility that you've assumed by being a pioneering financial actor in the fight against climate change. But the world is now facing new multiple crises, environmental, social and sanitary ones, and we need to huge and accelerate our global action to, to respond to these emergencies. But the task is not easy and we are facing uh, conflicting messages. We need to take into account the social consequences of the decision we make on ecological transition. The situation on energy illustrates well these conflicting messages. Uh, the energy price spike has stoked tensions over EU's policies to fight climate change. Most EU countries have already taken an um, emergency action plan to chill consumers such as tax cuts or uh, subsidies to poorer households. In the meantime, financial actors are used to stop to invest in fossil fuels. How AXA is re reacting um, to um, answer these uh, conflicting messages? What is your position about this situation? Look, the situation is, is a very difficult one because uh, we are faced on the one hand um, with an increasing demand for energy because the world's population is still growing a lot. And on the other hand, uh, we need to uh, be able to do this transition uh, in a pragmatic and also in a seamless way because we need to move from one system which is not sustainable anymore to a completely new system. This is uh, certainly accompanied by uh, difficulties around uh, social tensions. You mentioned it, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, gas prices at the moment, but also we remember in France uh, the moment of the Yellow Vest, uh, which uh, could uh, come back at any moment in time. You have a second question around uh, the economy because uh, a, a competitive energy price uh, is nevertheless a, uh, an important uh, means for the economy to work and we all remember the uh, oil price shock of the 70s and what it meant um, for economic consequences and certainly uh, the whole question around energy, energy transition and energy prices has also become a very, very geopolitical one. And uh, in a world uh, where multilateralism is more and more difficult, uh, energy also uh, has got a very geopolitical dimension that uh, gets more and more complex every day. And so in this very difficult environment, um, uh, what is very important is to be pragmatic um, and to um, attack uh, this issue in a, uh, uh, in a positive way of accompanying positively that transition. And I think those two elements, being pragmatic, and making sure that we, uh, uh, you know, a company rather than penalize is something very important. And so what is AXA planning to do on both the investment side as an asset owner and asset manager and on the underwriting side as an insurer? to answer these uh, challenges. As you mentioned, Pauline, we are not uh, just coming to the topic now. We've been uh, working on this topic and been active on this topic for a long, long uh, period. Um, I remember we started in 2015 uh, the first initiative uh, to get out of coal. Uh, since then we've been very active, uh, be it uh, in the uh, alliances on an international level around uh, uh, investments, uh, but also recently, and that is something that uh, I believe is a very big lever as well on the underwriting side, um, AXA is heading the, non, uh, the Net Zero Insurance Alliance, which is very much how can we uh, take uh, the good principles of investing and also applying them um, into the the, um, uh, into the underwriting space. Uh, beyond that, obviously, um, AXA itself uh, has formulated clear targets um, of how we also can be measured against uh, what we set uh, and how we achieve it. Uh, these measures have been implemented um, into the uh, remuneration element of the top leaders of the company. And when I look at uh, this whole question around uh, uh, environmental transition, this is not only
only something of, uh, you know, you say something that you do uh, or you uh, face targets. It's a real cultural transformation. And uh, at AXA, this is a very important topic because uh, an insurance is an actor within society. And we have been very, very active also on the uh, cultural side uh, to go that way. But we must not uh, rest on this and be complacent because when you look uh, around, uh, many things are changing again. Uh, we have the uh, famous uh, report, uh, uh, certainly around uh, oil and gas, that says, look, um, no uh, new exploration anymore. Um, we have, as we said earlier, an increasing demand um, in energy, uh, but we also have an environment on the regulatory side uh, that um, uh, gets more and more into science-based targets to understand um, what uh, could not happen anymore and how should not happen anymore. And that's why uh, it's very urgent for us to um, take the next step today. And that's why I'm very proud uh, to announce uh, three things uh, that um, we want to add to the uh, measures uh, that we have uh, already taken. The first one is, uh, and uh, here it's important that we synchronize completely what are we doing or not doing anymore on the investment side. We are also not doing anymore on the underwriting side. So we are completely in sync uh, on both sides. The first message is uh, we are not uh, investing in or insuring anymore new uh, upstream uh, oil explorations unless they are being done by the uh, companies that have really been um, uh, exemplary in the way of uh, transitioning uh, 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 the energy sector. So that's the first one and that's a very big one because um, it follows very much uh, the famous report uh, of the International Energy uh, Agency and uh, means a significant movement. This is on conventional. On unconventional, we also uh, want to be more drastic uh, than we've been so far uh, on the underwriting side and uh, on the investment side um, when it comes to questions of uh, shale and fracking, when it comes to questions uh, of the Arctic, but also when it comes to questions of oil sands. That's the second one. And the third one is very much around uh, how can we increase even more our green investments. Um, we have had so far a target of 25 billion. We want to increase it again by 1 billion to 26 billion by 2023. And so those three measures uh, are uh, the announcement that uh, I would like to make today, which is a significant uh, next step uh, into the right direction. And thank you very much for sharing these announcements with us. And uh, maybe one more question. How can we uh, ensure a systemic transformation of our uh, models? Because we cannot uh, just count on uh, uh, some actors. We need to, to transform the whole uh, system. So how can we um, transform the, the economy globally? And how do you see the future? So I think it's very important that we do it together. This is not a competitive game where one tries to be better than the other. We are all facing the same challenge and uh, doing it uh, together, doing it as coalitions, um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, on the investment side, on the underwriting side, they do exist already and they start uh, being built uh, to larger groups. So working together is extremely important, number one. And secondly, uh, we need to be uh, pragmatic. Um, so we have a massive challenge Challenge. This cannot happen uh, if we lose ourselves in uh, scientific calculations. We need to act and we need to do it in a pragmatic way and do it uh, step by step. And thirdly, uh, it is clearly about doing it in a positive way. Penalizing uh, does not help uh, in the long run. What helps is helping companies, accompanying companies and also being in a good dialogue with these companies. And this uh, means that it takes a bit of time. So if you take, uh, for example, AXA, uh, we've done it uh, step by step because uh, on the investment side, but in particular also on the underwriting side, um, we are a very large actor uh, with the industries that we are trying to help to transform. So you need to do this in a positive way, in a dialogue way, and also in a way that we accompany uh, those companies, which means as well that uh, this cannot happen from today to tomorrow. So uh, on the investment side, um, the measures that I just announced um, will certainly uh, happen relatively quickly. There we 
talk about uh, 21 and uh, 22, but on the underwriting side uh, it will be more uh, towards uh, 23. And that is also uh, explainable because when I spoke earlier around uh, focusing our activities um, certainly on the upstream oil exploration only on the, uh, the, the, the companies that are the most active and the most advanced in the transition, we are at the end of the day talking about 5% of the actors, not more anymore. So you have to do it uh, in a step-by-step, -step, in a positive, in a way that we accompany those companies. Okay, thank you very much, Thomas Bebel, for sharing these uh, commitments with us and thank you uh, for your support to the Climate Finance Day. Thank you very much, Pauline.